High Guardian Spice. What can I even say at this point? Now, if you know me, you know I rag on this show way too much, but it's for good reason. This show is terrible in, in, in lots of ways. The bad dialogue, the terribly written characters, the plots that make no sense, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. There's a lot of other people who have done it way better than I ever could. What I'm here to talk about today is magic. Magic. Ah, uh, yes, magic. Magic's cool, right? We all love magic. We love seeing wizards go around blasting people with lasers. There's only one problem, though. Magic is very powerful. In fact, it's so powerful that in order for it to work in a story, you have to put a lot of limits on what it can and can't do. The only issue is High Guardian Spice has not done that. In fact, magic in High Guardian Spice is fundamentally broken. In the first episode, we're introduced to Anise and Allo. They aren't very important to the story, like at all, but they do do one thing that's really stupid. Are you shitting me? Okay, so characters in this world are able to make portals to other locations just whenever they want. They can just flick their wrist and make one. So I have a question for you. If you can make portals, why do you have stairs? Why do you have hallways? Why do you have trains? Why do you have boats? Why do you have any method of transportation whatsoever? If you have the ability to just teleport from location to location, then you should just be teleporting. Okay, but maybe given the benefit of the doubt, it only works over short distances. That's never stated out loud. It still wouldn't explain the stairs thing, but maybe that is the case. Except, um, oh no, in episode 2, it's revealed that there is a demon realm. Yes, there is a demon realm. It's never brought up again. And they can make portals to this demon realm. They can teleport interdimensionally, and you're telling me they can't make portals from, like, I don't know, across the street? Are you daft? Now, you could argue that only the demon teacher can do this, but that's never stated out loud. For all we know, she's just using old magic. Now, this show suffers from something that I like to call Yandere Simulator Syndrome. Yandere Simulator Syndrome, as I am coining it, is when a writer slash creator randomly adds things to their world because it looks or sounds cool, regardless of its effects on the story. When the writers added this portal scene, they probably just didn't think of how it impacted the world. They just thought, heard their portals look cool, and left it at that. What they don't realize is giving people this ability breaks the story entirely. In episode 7, there's a part where they're stuck inside of this cave. The doorway's blocked off so they can't leave. This is supposed to be a tense moment, but if you think about it, this isn't a tense moment at all. If Sage had half a brain cell, she could just point her Terrasphere and make a portal right outside the room. In episode 12, a bunch of students get trapped inside of this burning room, and it's supposed to be a dramatic moment where they all band together to save each other. But really, they could have just made a portal right outside the room and escaped easily. And if someone got in a fight in this show, they could easily just create a portal above and below someone and have them fall for eternity, or just cut them off and have them go splat against the ground at terminal velocity. I have been falling for 30 minutes! Also, we find out that they can just teleport objects at will. If they wanted to, they could just teleport a rock inside of someone's brain and instantly kill them. If you can teleport objects at will, this becomes a hugely problematic thing for the entire world to deal with. Imagine if some random thief just sat outside a store and started teleporting all the objects inside of it right out and then portaled away to steal everything. Like, how would you stop them? You couldn't do anything about it. Um, okay. Don't break our stuff! If someone was fighting with you, you could just flick your wrist and teleport their weapons straight out of their hands and they couldn't stop you. Or if you wanted to, you could just teleport their heart right outside of their body. Kano wins. Fatality. I could rattle off a billion uses for teleportation all day long, but I think you get the point by now. This is incredibly broken and it shouldn't be added to the story. Or at the very least, they should add some hard limits and state them directly so the whole time we aren't questioning why the characters are so stupid for not spamming portals in battle. But now that we've talked about portals, I've got another question for you. What 
why are there swordsmen in this story? Seriously, uh, this is a serious question. Why do they have swordsmen in this world? Magic is so overpowered that it makes every single other weapon look like child's play in comparison. I want to ask you, what's an idiot with a sharp stick going to do against something like this? <laughs> Magic in this world is without a doubt objectively superior to using martial weapons in any way. Not only does it let you instantly incapacitate pretty much anyone you want, it can also allow you to shoot long range explosive laser blasts that can knock people high into the air. You can also fly while just blasting people like you're a fighter jet. Hell, it's even better at close range because you can summon spectral blades to slice your opponents in two. So how do the writers reconcile this? Do they add some clever mechanics to make warriors still useful in this world with overpowered mages? Well, their solution is to make every single magic user a complete moron. To exemplify this problem, Olive in her fight with Rosemary does not cast a single spell, not a one. She doesn't cast any spells. She's a magic user, but she doesn't use magic. When she's fighting Rosemary, all she does is flail her stick around. She just swings and swings when she could, I don't know, blast her with lasers, knock her out, or hell, teleport her into the ground since we can make portals wherever we want. But since she's an idiot, she loses because her stick isn't going to do shit for dick against plot armor this thick. There are many examples of magic users just being really stupid so that idiots with swords can keep up with their almighty god powers. If High Guardian Academy was any sort of intelligent, literally every single person who wants to become a guardian would have to learn how to wield magic. Magic is so useful and versatile that swordsmen are just fucking stupid. Two semi-competent magic users were able to break into the school, knock out all of the teachers, and nearly kill every single one of the students with just a little bit of planning. Anyone with basic common sense in this world would basically become a demigod with how much of OP tools they have access to. Your magic system needs to have solid limitations or else the whole story will fall apart. But that'll bring me to my last point of this video. Old and new magic. So basically, from what I understand, old magic and new magic are separated by one thing. Terraspheres. Terraspheres are pretty much magic sticks that let you do whatever you want. You can basically just point your stick at whatever and have it do whatever. However, there are a few weird things about Terraspheres that obviously make no sense. For one thing, Terraspheres can run out of energy. Yes, that's right. It happens exactly once and never again. This could have been a very cool limitation, but they decide not to use it for some reason. If a Terrasphere can run out of energy, how do you recharge it? Never brought up. We also find out in the Olive episode that there's something called a Spark Spell. So Spark Spells are pre-made spells that you can load in your Terrasphere, like you're sticking in an expansion pack for a video game or something. And they can let you do more complicated spells somehow. But Terraspheres can already do everything. Are there things that they can't do? Why didn't they establish that? And also, these spark spells are kind of insanely overpowered. Like, Olive uses one and it turns an entire town's worth of people into stone instantly. So not only can Terraspheres pretty much do anything, any idiot can learn to use them by just buying pre-made spells. So here's a question. Why doesn't literally every person just have a Terrasphere preloaded with a crap ton of spells that they can just use whenever they want? It goes again to say, why do warriors exist? Just buy a Terrasphere. If you don't have skills with magic, you can literally just buy the skill pre-made. Now, old magic is different in a way where you have to like do rituals and like give back to the earth or something. It's, it's very poorly explained. And they make a whole big deal about Sage not wanting to use new magic because it's like too easy or something fucking stupid like that. But really, from what we see in the series, new magic is objectively just better than old magic. Why would you bother doing all these stupid rituals when you can just flick your wrist with a pre-made spell and do everything already? Well, I was taught that old magic is sacred. <laughs> Maybe. But it's impractical. New magic doesn't require the hours of ritual, the reckoning, the effort. Basically, old magic is dumb. 
The show does very little to make old magic look better than new magic in any way. I mean, it's loosely implied that maybe the rot is caused by new magic, but it's never directly said out loud, so we have no clue. And it's not like there's going to be a season two to reveal this crap. You can also apparently combine old and new magic together to make it even betterer, but, like, that doesn't make any sense. And it's done, like, two times and never again. So that's kind of dumb. I want to say more about old and new magic, but I really can't. It's so poorly defined that it might as well not even exist. They just kind of threw it in to make the world look better and failed miserably. But I've talked long enough. I think it's time we conclude this video. To summarize, the magic in this show is bad. It's poorly defined, it's overpowered, and to top it all off, it's fucking stupid. It ruins the story so much that it makes watching it a pain. It's very hard to find any scene to have tension whenever you know just how broken the magic is and that literally every problem could be fixed by a wizard with half a brain. If you can honestly tell me with a straight face that the magic system in this show is good despite all the stupid stuff that I've just pointed out, then I can't change your mind. You've obviously descended too far into insanity. Now, I don't have a problem with people enjoying High Guardian Spice. If you have fun watching this, then knock yourself out. Now, there's probably a hundred other shows that are way better that you would probably like more, but, you know, that's just me. What I can't accept, however, is people saying that the writing for this show is good. The magic system is just one problem among many, and you saw how bad that was. Now, some of you might say that this is just nitpicky going over all the stuff magic can do, but magic is one of the core parts of this story. Almost every single episode revolves around magic in some way. So when one of the core parts of your story is fundamentally broken, then the whole thing might crumble apart just by thinking about it. It gets to the point where in order to accept the things that happen in this show, you literally have to watch it with your brain turned off. Which is probably healthy in this case, but whatever. That's pretty much all I had to say. This has been Dave, and I am leaving. Don't call me back.